In this video, we're going to add some speed variation to our platforms. Since right now, all of our platforms are moving at one second because that's how we set up the timeline. I want to be able to control that as a designer and say this one, I want to move really fast. This one, I want to move really slow. And uh, we're going to do that in this video. Specifically, the way that we're going to do this is we are just going to scale the animator, which is a handy little trick because we know that we are animating between zero and one second and we're using that for our um, lerping, our linear interpolation, we can actually scale that value according to the number of seconds we want something to take. So pretty handy. And we're gonna do this up at the very top. On begin play, this is where we would do our initial things that we don't really wanna do again, just one time. After we set the initial position, I'm gonna pull off of that and do something called set play rate. And you'll see if I start typing, because maybe you did this, uh, you may not see this function. That's because we don't really know that it exists yet, especially not off of um, setting the initial rotation. So you may see this sometimes where, you know, you're following through a demo and they start typing something and it doesn't pop up. It just means that you're pulling from the wrong thing. So what I really want to do is I want to get access to the, uh, the timeline. And if I expand components under variables over here, you can see that this timeline that we named animator is one of these things down inside of my blueprints. You see it's not up here, it's, it's down here. I wanna get a reference to this component right here. So if you drag in, get reference to this animator. If I pull off of that and I say set play rate, <laughs> pay rate, I wish I could do that. Um, set play rate, I click yes, or I click confirm. You see, now we get access to that function. So just know that you may get different search results based off of what you pull off of and be aware of that. So now let's think about what we want. We wanna set the play rate, so we do wanna connect this for sure. Make sure you connect it back to start movement. And by default, this is gonna play at a rate of one. We want, and if, let's say if we were to play at a rate of zero, then it wouldn't do anything, right? You, you could, if you wanted to play it in slow motion, you could put it at 0.5. But if you think about the math behind this, if we were to, um, let's, let's do some math here. I'm gonna divide off of this uh, and say, put in a divide, if you type in divide, float by float. Uh, I'm gonna move my animator somewhere off here so it doesn't get in the way. Actually, let's just move all this over. It's obvious, okay. So let's, let's think about this. What we wanna do is if we divide by one, and let's say we want this to have a travel time of one second. Well, if we divide by one, one divided by one is gonna be one second. So that's, that's gonna be our normal play speed, right? So now let's say, uh, let's say two seconds. We want this to take two seconds to travel to its location. Well, one divided by two is gonna be 0.5. And if we're animating from zero to one second, then that will take twice as long, right? Um, so then, you know, if we want five seconds and that'll take five times as long. And so really one way to think about this is how much longer do I want this to take? If we divide by, you know, some amount two, this will take twice as long, five, five times as long. Um, but we really want to make this a variable. So if I right click promote to variable, this bottom one here, so one divided by, let's call this travel time in seconds. Just make it really clear what this value is. And I do want the designer to be able to see this, so I'm gonna make this instance editable. If I compile and save, at that point, I'll be able to affect a default value. So it's at two down here, which I, you know, honestly, I think is pretty reasonable for a moving platform. And you'll see it's instance editable, or you can click this eyeball, whatever. And I'm gonna move this over. I'm going to select this and put a comment. Scale playback with travel time speed, something like that. And so now we're just setting the playback of our timeline, our animator over here, by a value that the designer determines. So let's say we're gonna put in, let's say we put in 10 into this variable. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna set the play rate to be one divided by 10, which is gonna be 0.1, right? And so there are, and our animator is gonna move at 0.1% speed and it'll take 10 seconds to get there uh, because originally we were animating at one second. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna compile and save. And over here, let's say I want this one to move pretty slow. So travel time in seconds, let's make this take four seconds. You know, we can still affect the pause time. 
and we want this one to move really fast. We'll do this a one second. And we all, we'll save our level. Play. All right. You'll see how this is already hitting another loop before this one hits the top. And independently of that, our, we can control our delay separate from our travel time seconds. So even just with this, you can start to move some platforms around and manipulate them. Um, we're starting these on begin play, but another thing you could do, similar to our previous triggers, is you could start the movement on a trigger, right? You could press a button and, and start the moving platform, or you could have them on begin play. It's, it's really what you wanna do, but I hope you use this as a, a modular component and you can continue to build out from this if you like. You can also replace this with a fancier static mesh. You know, maybe you have a um, like a like a craggy mystical rock piece or something. Um, you could do that too. So yeah, we figured out the movement by scaling the the playback speed, and hopefully this is enough to build off of if you want additional features for your moving platform.